Welcome back to Nature League. It is time for our next episode in this mini series all about philosophy and climate change. This one, especially about what is at stake. All right, so clearly there are many different things at stake when it comes to climate change. Otherwise, we wouldn't be talking about it. It wouldn't be in the news. There wouldn't be entire international groups working on it if there was nothing actually uh, at stake to be affected. So what's at stake with climate change? So many things. <laughs> right, what's not at stake? <laughs> we have the lives of humans, the lives of non-humans. Yep. We have happiness of humans and non-humans. Mm -hmm. We have things, these more conceptual things at stake, like balance of nature. Ooh, conceptually shaky. Conceptually <laughs> shaky. And a lot of times we talk about biodiversity. Biodiversity right. is at stake right. with climate change. Before we talk about what philosophy has to say about biodiversity, yeah. let's get clear on the term, on what we mean when we say biodiversity. Yes, and you know me, I like to start with etymology, the history and usage of words. So biodiversity, we've got bios in there, that's referring back to life. And then we also have diverse, which is back uh, pretty much to a Latin term like diversitas, uh, which is talking about divergence or split. So we're saying, you know, all these different splits of, of the tree of life. Most straightforwardly, biological diversity or biodiversity is the variety of life and refers collectively to variation at all levels of biological organization. So let's take it all the way back for a second. Wait, are you all the way back like to the ancient Greeks or like to the... Way, way back to the 1970s. Bum, 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 <laughs> 1970s, all right, I, I'm with you, let's roll. When environmental philosophy came on the scene in the Western academic culture mm -hmm. around the 1970s, the big hot topic that kind of remained hot for a lot of years was this notion uh, was the question of, does nature have intrinsic value? So let's talk about that and, and kind of explain what that means. So intrinsic, we're talking about for the sake of itself. So something having value, not because it helps me, not because I use it for something, not because it affects something else, literally for itself in its own way. Let's make sure that one thing is clear here. This was an ongoing conversation mm -hmm and is kind of still, still an ongoing going. conversation. It really is. And there is a huge body of philosophical literature that mm -hmm. argues on either side of this, of, of this problem. And we're just trying to give an overview of the <laughs> right. problem itself. The question we're trying to ask here is, is biodiversity valuable in and of itself? Right, and then if so, why is that? And then how that relates to the threats facing it, climate change being one of the biggest. We've been throwing around value <laughs> Uh, heavily. And as it turns out, if we are to incorporate different types of values mm -hmm. in biodiversity, we get different outcomes and different definitions. So if we have local values influencing uh, what biodiversity means, that might have one particular outcome. Right. Um, but if global values are defining what biodiversity means, what it means to be biodiverse on a global scale, yeah. then all of a sudden we have a different set of outcomes that might run into even political trouble because we have countries that are competing with one another. Right, and not only countries, but I mean cultures. And so within science, we talk about biotic and abiotic, like living and non-living. And we say, oh, ecosystems are, you know, the living pieces interacting with the non-living pieces, you know, like the water and the dirt. But there are cultures all around the world that would argue, you know what, wait a second, the water itself is living. The water is is life, is alive. So why would biodiversity not include water? Like why is that not mm. in there? So if biodiversity does end up having intrinsic value, mm -hmm. then it is not only a scientific concept that describes the role that biodiversity plays in ecosystems and ecosystem mm -hmm. services, but it also is a normative concept. Yeah. So if it is a normative concept, then it tells us something about what we ought to protect. So it sets conservation goals? Well, absolutely, because a lot of conservation goals are based on, again, instrumental use. Like we need to protect the species because, spoiler alert, we eat it. <laughs> like <laughs> um, we need to use it, so like let's protect it. Or like we have fun using it, so let's protect it. The idea of fishing, like there are entire populations of fish here in Montana that are protected solely for people to be able to come in 
and fish them, right? That's recreation. Um, also culturally, so culturally important species, I'm thinking again, fish out here in the Pacific Northwest of the USA, like we have culturally important species and that kind of value then drives that conversation. So much of the, the value of biodiversity uh, for us really is instrumental or even um, uh, non-direct, but still providing ecosystem services. So like water filtration, it's like, okay, I'm not eating that plant, but it is by being there filtering water or doing something else for a system um, and I feel like instrumental or use value is just so much more readily available for all of these topics within biodiversity so the idea of conservation managers saying let's put money into saving this species why because it exists like that's a weird conversation and that's a really hard one especially when you have uh, governments are the ones choosing to fund things, you know, and then a man, a wildlife manager in the middle is trying to make a case because funds are limited um, and that becomes tricky. So in, in action, if we instead of doing instrumental value shifted over and said we are going to make these management choices based on intrinsic value. Okay. There are a whole lot of like models and ways of thinking and valuing that mm. would go out the window because we actually have economic models for the value of some species, literal monetary value of certain species. And if we switch that to, to intrinsic, like what even goes into that model? What even goes into that spreadsheet as far as how something is valued. So this is not to say that biodiversity should be wiped out. We just shouldn't use biodiversity anymore. It's too messy. That is not what philosophy right. is trying to offer here. What it's trying to say is we can't let this term and these concepts go unexamined. Right. And we can't just make decisions about what we ought to do in the face of endangered species caused by things like climate change. Yeah in the name of the intrinsic value of biodiversity without taking a second to slow down and say, this has real implications uh, mm -hmm. on, on the world, on the people that are in the world, on the non-human animals, on the ecosystems in the world, when we say that biodiversity has intrinsic value. It's not, it's not a given. Right, and the way that climate change is going to affect certain communities of humans and non-humans is also not equal. And so potentially those global versus local mm. priorities of like, we want to save these species, like climate change is going to affect this. Um, what about these island nations, you know, and, and what about uh, things, differences at the poles versus the equator? And also like, is the majority of life on earth and like if we just even think about number of species you know are they in a place that's affected more or less rapidly by climate change and what are the human populations doing there as well you know it, it it's something that's thrown around and said like it's no big deal just like oh climate change is going to uh, hurt biodiversity so we should stop it i mean We've now just in a you know, small chunk of time found like a lot of problems inside of that. And, and again, philosophy as a, as a tool for clarity. Um, yeah, it is not clear yet. And so there's work that still needs to be done. Exactly. Biodiversity is one of the first things people bring up, scientists and non-scientists alike, when we talk about climate change. Absolutely. Because climate change is threatening biodiversity. That is what is at stake when it comes to climate change. Yeah, and so to even have an understanding of why that might be problematic and even what that means, I think is so important. And I, and I like to ask myself that all the time, but I didn't start doing that until delving into philosophy. So like, I am thankful to now have a little bit of those tools. And one of our goals by doing this is so that you feel like you have some of those tools, or at exactly. least start maybe asking those questions and critically thinking about, about clarity when we have these terms and these big statements given. And, uh, and you know, what we're going and to talk about what we're heading toward is, you know, something like biodiversity is fed into different models about risk and about something being at stake and what might happen to that thing over time. And, and, and models and climate change and future predictions is just like such a big part of it. And I'm really looking forward to digging into that. I know that you are and that's one of your specialties and uh, we will see you next time to get all into it. Can't wait.